Welcome, collective of sanity. I am the awesome Tim Green, and I want to apologize for last week where I wasn't able to get up last week's episode. Um, I had some big decisions to make last week, decisions that I'm now probably going to have to undo. Other than that, I just go for I didn't have a lot of time to really edit. Um, stress was getting to me, and I had to focus on something else. So I wasn't able to get the, the job done. And dealing with structure, I wasn't really happy with how I covered the video of the hero's journey, which was going to be last week's episode for the structure, plot structure. So I will, will probably be redoing that or scrapping that version and do something different. But I do again just want to apologize to you. I'm trying to make my sure, I'm trying to make sure I get these videos um, posted on Tuesdays. Today we are going to take a break from structure because I do want to talk about something important to me. And this actually comes out of my decision I had to make last week um, for this week and my future. Today, I want to talk about what do you want out of life and are you sure it's something to do in writing? If you decide that or you know that, I will give you five things you need to do that you are will achieve that. Why am I talking about this? We're talking about this because of my, what was going on last week and decisions I had to make about my future. And the last two years I've been working a job that was meant to get me to save money, which it did. I didn't save very, very well, but I had more money than I've ever had in my bank account, ever. But not enough to really do much with because I didn't use my resources well. And it's led me to different the situation I'm in now, I had to ask myself last week, what do I want to achieve out of life? And is writing one of those things? And it is. I have goals I want to achieve. One of the things I learned was I wanted to be part of storytelling in any medium possible, in every medium possible that I can do it in. So when I sat down, I had to have a, a conversation with myself. What are the things I want out of life that I am not going to be happy if I don't achieve? And these are the four things that I ha I not just want to, but I have to achieve. I feel that I have to achieve. The first one is I want to be able to support myself and not live pay to paycheck to paycheck by working jobs like Walmart. That's one of my ultimate goals. That's like the top thing right there. I don't have to be making millions of dollars. I have to be able to support myself. Second thing is, I want my readers and potential um, viewers of anything I do in like film, television, games, to walk away with a feeling positive. It affected them in a positive way. To really like, wow, I feel inspired. Third, I want to be a New York Times bestseller. Not once, many times. And no, not just 10. I want to be on there a lot. And number four, I want to be considered one of the best fantasy and young adult authors. Now, more in the fantasy realm, because that's where my stories kind of start, or kind of going more directly than actually young adult. But I do have several stories that are young adult, and I want them to be considered good as my other works. Now it's your turn. What do you want? Now, before I get into this a little bit more, I want to point out a few things that you, I did not say. Did you notice I never said I wanted to get married and have kids? Do you hear that I have to have an active social life, being popular with tons of friends, going out, living in the life of luxury? Well, those things would be great, except for the kids. I, I can live without them. I don't need to be married. Do I want to find someone? I could spare them the rest of my life with? Absolutely. But I've also been around a lot of people, friends, family, who've been there, gotten married, it ended horrible. They're not. If that happens to me, and I can ch change my mind on in those fields, awesome, but it's not a priority. I don't need to have an active social life. I have a few friends that I spend a lot of time with when I can, and it's great, but I don't need to be out every night partying, accomplishing those other, those four things are more important to me. 
Now, the reason why I bring this all up is, and asking you what you want out of life and all that, is um, to be a, to be to achieve your goal of being an author, a published author, whether it's self-publishing or traditional pro publishing. It's going to take you making a priority, and you may have to make sacrifices to achieve that goal. I've just told you the sacrifices I've made, and I'm. Like I said, you don't have to give up as much as I did, but you will need to make your writing a priority if you want to achieve it. So I'm going to give you five things that you need to start doing to ensure that you're making this a priority for you. Number one, write and read. If you want to be a published author, you need to write. If you're not, no matter what else you do, if you spend hours on making a website, YouTube videos, all that, but you're not writing, how are you going to get published? You need to write. It's a plain and simple thing. You need to be writing. Not just fiction in your genre and other stuff. I'm talking about nonfiction. Learning your craft. Learning stuff you don't know how to do. Whether you're going to be doing traditional publishing or self-publishing, you're going to need to learn how to market. You're going to need to learn how to engage an audience, build fans, respond to them email list, website, you're going to have to learn how to do that. The key is learning you need to, like I'm saying, to, to be successful. If you don't know how to write a synopsis for your work in progress, you should be reading a book on how to do that. YouTube videos on how to write that. And, and not just that, you also want to pick topics that will help you overall. If you're a fantasy writer, history is one of the best things you can learn more detail about because it, you can kind of take some things from our world and throw into your world and change it because you know your world. If you're writing historical fiction, you kind of have to know history, technology, the, across the board. Heck, if you're doing just uh, modern day fiction, but your main character is a doctor, you're going to learn have to learn how to write like a doctor and doing their stuff. So that's the thing you want to be doing. Number two, time management. To ensure you get out what you to ensure that you get out of life what you want, you gotta have good time management. And I can't tell you how good of a key that is. In many areas of my life, I'm very good at time management, but when it came to my writing, I was I didn't I didn't do a good enough job. Or maybe I would have a a book out there by now. And the reason why you want good time management because as life goes on, if you don't have good time management skills, life is going to hit you hard and things are going to slip through, um, slip through the cracks that and as life gets busy, deadlines at work, kids soccer games, the anniversary with your wife or husband, it can be very easy for your writing to slip to the side and you're not doing it or reading or learning more stuff. The best thing you do is get your time management under wraps, pick a time where you can write and tell everyone you are not to be bothered. Tip number three will help you with that. Tip number three, early riser catches the worm. We've all heard the motto, the early bird catches the worm. But you really think about what that phrase says, there's a lot there. When you have a lot of things you need to get done throughout your day and you want to make sure writing is your priority, one of the best things you can do is get up early to ensure it gets done first before you do everything else because it's done, you don't have you come home, maybe you want to write some more in the evenings, but if something throws a curveball comes your way, you don't have to worry about it because you've already gotten it done. Some of the most wealthiest and successful people in the world, when you they are asked habits that they have to ensure that they ensured their success, getting up early four five o'clock in the morning before anyone else is really up to get down to get done what they felt they need to get done, it's one of those things you should probably consider doing. It's not easy to do when you get started, but once you make it a habit. You can be up at 5 a.m., writing by 
and next thing you know it, you're off to work and you've gotten your writing done. Number four, make a plan. Part of time management comes a plan. You need a game plan because if you don't know what you have on your schedule, how can you know, how can you manage your time? Maybe one of the best things you could do for yourself is figure out when you want to get your book published, whether traditionally or self-publishing. Having a plan, have a deadline for when you want it out there, and you can backtrack to say, okay, I need to have my first draft done by this date, my second draft by this date. I should probably get this out to a critiquer or an editor by this date. So when they get back and plan out the process for you, know that you're going to have some you're working as well, and you have big projects that are going to consume a lot of time, put that out there. Figure out when you may be able to slip in some writing or that you have to get up early to get some writing done to do it. One of the best things you can do for this is having a reward system when you've accomplished your goals, like a de meeting a deadline for the first draft. The reward should fit what the goal is. Now, if you're reach the end of the goal, your final draft and you're getting it published and you get it out there on time or even early, your reward should be big versus smaller rewards for smaller tasks. However, it's also good to have punishments. Maybe that's not the best word for it, but there should be some kind of consequence for not meeting that goal. Maybe you have a fine that you have to pay someone if you don't meet your goal. I had to pay two friends of mine $250 each if I don't finish all three drafts, first drafts of my Veil Trilogy by December 6th. But, so there's the thing. Having a plan will help you with that. With a plan, you can then manage your time. So you can be reading, learning, writing on a schedule. Finally, number five, accountability if you want to meet your goals achieve your goals be a published author whatever way you're going to do it having someone to keep you accountable is great i just mentioned in the last point my two friends who i have to pay 250 dollars each if i don't meet my deadline of december 5th you don't need to have someone cheering you on maybe someone who just checks in on you how's it going Maybe you do want that full-on cheerleader who's saying, you can do this, come on, what's going on, you haven't been writing, why, asking questions, maybe to poke through your excuses if you're coming up with them. And the, the person who's that accountability could be anyone. Stephen King, cheerleader, was his wife. I mean, in his book, Stephen King on Writing, he talks about how his wife never told him to give up writing, go get a job. No, she worked, she provided the bacon for the family, he stayed home and wrote. She saved his first novel, Carrie, from the garbage. And that's not accountability, saying, no, no, you should really work on this one. I think you've got something here from the trash bin. So having someone accountable, whether it's... That's all I got for you today. Uh, let me know down in the comment section what you thought about this video. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this area. This was actually really important to me. If you want to know when new videos go live, be sure to hit subscribe, ring the bell, join the collective, and you'll know when my videos on Tuesdays go live, as well as other videos like my vlogs and other videos that will be coming up in November are up. Since you made it to the end of this video, please give me a thumbs up. I love thumbs ups. If you want to learn more about writing, I have a, a podcast on writing with my buddy Adam Daly of the Zero One Podcast Group called The Writer's Mindscape. We are world building a brand new world for you, live, breaking down how, what you need to do in different areas and think about. I will have a link above the head. You can click on the link above my head or the one down in the description to get to that, to those, um, that, the, that podcast. In the meantime, you can find me on social media. Over there, I have videos from my trip, my writing trips from Pittsfield's Mass, Herkimer, New York, and the Huzak Tunnel, all places that have scenes in my upcoming novel, Seeing Through the Veil. 
You can check those over there. Also, you can find me over on Scribafile. It's a digital platform where you can post your writing um, to get critiques from other writers, from even maybe some readers. Generally, they're probably going to be writers. I will be starting to doing some critiques on Sundays. So if you'd like to get a critique from me, you have my user, you see my username, find me, send me a link to the, your post, and I will critique it for you. Other than that, that's all I got. Hope you all have a good writing week. And what are you waiting for? Go write. That's what I gotta do. Bye.